live video. Okay, we're live. Oh, you can just start talking. Start talking. Okay. How's it going, everybody? Good afternoon. Welcome to the Red Deer Freedom Rally. Who is here to stand up for freedom and for our kids? My name is Jared Pallon. I'm a local CPA accountant. I'm a husband, a father, and as of 2020, an Alberta freedom fighter. I'm here representing the Libertarian Party of Canada and Liberty Coalition of Canada as well. Um, if you don't have my contact info, feel free to grab one of my business cards here so we can uh, stay in touch as we uh, kind of move forward with everything. So before we get into the speakers, I uh, want to sing uh, O Canada again. I'll uh, lead it away, and if you don't mind singing along with me, that would be great. <laughs> o Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all our sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. So uh, we'll just get right into the speakers because I know it's cold out here and no one wants to stand around for forever. So first up we have from uh, Lawyers for Truth, Lanny Roulard. Uh, she has a law practice in Sylvan Lake. She's a strong advocate for human rights and freedoms. She's a proud mom and is involved with the Learning Pod education model in uh, Sylvan. So please welcome Lanny. Welcome Red Deer. I gotta figure out the height of my voice here at this microphone. I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with legal stories. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you about laws being broken and I'm not gonna tell you there's no hope because I'm gonna tell you there is hope because we're building it. So today, instead of talking about those things which people usually come to see me for because after all I do get paid to be negative. That's the truth, okay? We're gonna talk about the matrix. Okay, most of you may already have seen a glimpse of it, but it's out there and I want to point it out to you because this is our Christmas gift to ourselves and it's hope. We've been busy and maybe you don't see this when you're living day to day, but there's processes and there's systems out there and we all live in a matrix. And what we don't realize day to day is that the matrix snaps and it changes and it breaks. And oftentimes we don't notice this. But right now is a huge time in our lives because there's a massive part of this matrix that's being destroyed. It's falling apart. And it's scaring people. And I understand that fear. And I see it all the time. But I want to tell you this is history. This is normal. Okay? What's happening here is not normal. We got to rebuild the matrix, people. Okay? But we're doing it. And here's how it goes. So anybody, were you around for the times when we traded with each other? No, I don't lie, okay. <laughs> but here's the thing. When ships started to cross the ocean, trade changed. The matrix of chain, tra trade collapsed. And, we, and it replaced, it was replaced with currency, systems of currency. So I just want you to know, historically, we've been through this before. And by their nature, matrixes only last a limited period of time. They never last forever. I mean, we'd still be on horses, wouldn't we? <laughs> so when a significant piece of the matrix collapses, 
the natural reaction is panic and it's resistance to change. And we all grab a big roll of duct tape and we keep trying to fix the system. But what we don't realize is we need to shift our focus now. We need to start looking to our future and we need to start building our matrix because we're all in this spot right here together right now because we are the same. We found each other and it's you and it's me who are gonna build this matrix. I wanna let you know something right now. You're here because you're smart and you're different. You're here because you are one of the one in a hundred thousand people who understand this. Yeah, that's the statistic. So kudos to you people. You've got this, okay? But we need to get out of this tendency to run ourselves into a brick wall when something's not happening. And we need to do this by rebuilding the matrix. So my goal today is to challenge and to change your thinking. And I want to send you home today with one thought for change. I want you to look to yourself. I want you to recognize your innate value. I don't care if you were just fired. I don't care if you were just discriminated against. I don't care if you were thrown out of a business or humiliated. These things have happened to me too. But I want you to see your value and I want you to understand that you are a part of this matrix and I want you to ask yourself what part you play. I want you to ask yourself what part you'll build. And I want you to ask yourself how you're gonna live in this new matrix full of people that are like-minded, just like you. So let's take a look at this. With the new year around the corner, I'm throwing down the gauntlet for you. And I'm asking you to look at the matrix because it's already under construction. And what you don't realize is this matrix has been in construction since the old one started to fall. I mean, have you ever driven past a forest fire site a year later? The green shoots of life are coming up. That's human nature, people. So it's there. And my gift to you is to give you hope so you can see this. Now let's take a look at what matrix has been built. And I know that each one of you has something to add to this, but I'm only gonna talk about three. So the first one is our medical system. So we have doctors who have placed patients over money, stature, titles. And those people are building the medical system and it's called Ezra Wellness. And I'm not here to promote anybody in particular. I'm just here to give you hope and show you that people with integrity are making a difference and they're building the system for us. We've got homeopaths, naturopaths, and they're assisting people who can't access adequate health services. And they're educating people about some of our health issues being caused by pharmaceuticals and how to, how to present those and how to treat them. We have doulas who are delivering babies for pregnant women who are seeking private, secure, safe medical services from their homes. Now these people have all chosen truth and the health of their patients over money, stature, and power. That's why this matrix is being built for you. The second thing we're building is an education system. We've got families and children connecting with each other and forming learning pods that share educational responsibilities. I'm no different from you. I need to work. I need to support my family. But who would have known that we can do this together and support each other as families and still work and still educate our children together? That's what we're doing. And not only that, you know, I have to laugh because we used to think homeschool kids are strange, you know, they're just a little different over there. But you know what? They're almost full to capacity, every school board, because homeschooling kids are out there. And man, you're brilliant. <laughs> and I want my kid to be brilliant too. And I won't point him out, but he's right around there and I don't want to embarrass him. So, okay. But there's schoolhouses popping up. Teachers, if you're in the crowd, you may have lost a job, but we need you. And we're employing teachers to teach our children those core subjects because we need you. It doesn't matter if, they, if they're done with you in the old matrix because the new matrix is beginning. Not only that, we've got our kids will never be quarantined, masked, have their educations interrupted. You know, when we first got our kids out of the system, in one week, we had different kids on our hands. We've got their trust back, and I never realized we had lost that. 
that broke my heart. But not only that, we're going into food supply now. We've got farmers who know there's an obligation to feed the community and they're bringing cattle back onto their lands. They're stocking seeds. They are teaching people like you and me how to grow because it's time for us to learn. And farm stores are being built and created. So these are only three pieces of the matrix and I have no question I could walk in this crowd and you could tell me about more. And it would make me excited because you know what, you guys, it is a brilliant time to be alive. It's a brilliant time right now because we're gonna build this together. Are you with me? Yeah! So I wish you all a Merry Christmas from my heart and I send you home today with nothing but a message of hope but I ask you to shift your shift your gaze and look to a different direction and I ask you one question please sit down at a table and talk to your family about this where do you fit into this matrix and how can you help us build it and I will see you there Red Deer thank you and God bless you and Merry Christmas Thank you very much, Lanny. Up next, we have uh, Andrew Clues. He is from a recently formed group, Hold the Line. Andrew's a uh, professional engineer and project manager. Uh, one of the founders of Hold the Line, and he is a proud father of three kids. He's fighting to reshape culture so the next generation can enjoy the freedoms that we once had. Please welcome Andrew. Thanks, Jared. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. All right, so the introduction's been done, but I'll uh, maybe elaborate a little bit more. My name's Andrew Clues. Uh, I know a lot of you here today, a lot of new faces I haven't seen before. Closer? There we go. Okay. And so, yeah, I live in Red Deer, uh, married, have three young kids, and uh, I've been getting into the fight recently, spent the last year and a half. You know, sitting in my living room doing my job and uh, didn't really get I was you know I opposed what was happening but didn't get involved until it directly affected me so I uh, I'm a project manager work at a fairly large construction company and we have operations here in town some some pretty major projects that you'd recognize here if you uh, drove downtown you probably see a big one that we're working on and uh, so back in September when our um, when vax mandates started coming in to work, that's when it now started to affect me and realized that I had to get involved. So got together with a few uh, like-minded individuals who also worked in the construction industry and sat down and tried to figure out what can what can we do? How can we support each other? Because alone, we don't have we don't have a hope doing this alone. So you know, very uh, encouraged to see the people who are here today and and that you're encouraging each other. Because, uh, yeah, alone, there's, you're not going to be able to do it alone. So we decided we would, after we had lunch, we decided we'd go and uh, invite three more people. And each, you know, the three of us would each invite three and see if we can get a few people out to a meeting. And so we had a meeting, invited some more people, had another one. And eventually it grew into something that's you know, relatively sizable. We've got a pretty good group now that's been meeting every other week on Mondays. And so I just want to talk to you a little bit about what our group is, why we exist, and, uh, and how, uh, how we want to get involved in the culture and how we want to help people. So talked about a little bit, a little bit of this at our last meeting, but not everyone who's here today would have been there. So a lot of this will be, will be a repeat, but is anyone familiar with who Dave Ramsey is? Yeah. Yeah, Dave Ramsey. So he's a, um, he's a money... Uh, financial expert in uh, he's out of Nashville Tennessee and uh, helps a lot of people who are in financial crisis and so when people are in financial crisis they call into his show he talks about the four walls and four walls are food utilities shelter and transportation and so what he says is that if you can take care of those four walls you can live to fight another day and so that's just an example of his four walls that he that he uses in his operations and so our group, we have, you know, we have not four walls, we've got three pillars. And the two pillars 
the first two pillars are employment support and family and kids. Those are our, to use the Dave Ramsey example, he has four walls, we have two walls. So if we can, if we can support each other's employment, so if you can, if you can keep food on the table, you can keep working, you can live to fight another day. If your kids are safe, if you're able to find appropriate education for them and they're not a danger, you can live to fight another day. So those are our two walls, the two pillars that uh, that we that you know that we support at our group, and then we have a third pillar which is influencing the culture. And so it's more it's we've got you know, two defense, protect our protect our employment, protect our family, and then offense which is influence the culture. So our vision is to shape the future of Alberta by establishing a society free from coercive control and segregation, a society that protects individuals' God-given rights and freedoms. So that's our vision. And our mission is to assemble a community of like-minded people who stand for freedom. On a local level, we will work together to find and foster opportunities for prosperity, strive to protect and preserve parental rights, and influence change through active participation in society at large. So that's what our group is about. Fingers are cold. Sorry. So what we're doing with these, with our three pillars, we have three committees that we're working on. So the first one, employment. So this is a work in progress. We've only been we've only been around since October. We're up to a little over 600, 600 members in our group. Uh, so this is a work in progress, but we do have a, a website. It's called No Jab No Job dot work, and so we need employers to use this in order for it to work. So right now it's new. Not many people know about it. We have a few job postings. An employer, if you're an employer yourself and looking for looking for uh, like-minded people to work with you, go to nojabnojob.work and you can make a job posting. It's completely free. And as soon as we get, if we can get a few employers starting using it, then we'll get job seekers starting to search for it. But it's not going to start with if we don't start with employers. And then networking opportunities. So we meet every other, uh, typically it's every other week on Mondays. That's the cadence that we're trying to keep. So that's a networking opportunity where we have lots of business owners coming out. We have a lot of people searching for jobs, and then there's a, an opportunity at the end of the end of the meeting for a social opportunity where you can connect. If you're a plumber and uh, and you're looking for work, and we've got we've got uh, uh, employers who who own mechanical contracting companies. You know, just as a simple example, that's an opportunity to connect connect yourselves in the community. Our second, uh, so family and children. So we want to protect our kids from vax mandates. Find alternative schooling for uh, from public school. Uh, one of our uh, one of our members, I believe he is part of your uh, your learning pod, Michael Lewis. I believe he's uh, part of that. Uh, so you know, we we've got uh, opportunities for private school, home school, learning pods, and you know, each you know, for myself, we've got our ki we've got our kids in private school. We took them out of the. We took them out of the public school system uh, this year, and uh, was it this year? It was. So we we're very happy with that. And so, if you if you have kids, you're worried about being in public school. Connect with our with our family and children uh, group, and you know, we'll try to try to find or connect with with Lanny or other groups. There's there's lots of groups out there, and we'll find the right uh, uh, the right fit. And social events. This is really hard on kids. My kids aren't able to go out and do the things that that uh, they once were. You, you, yeah, you can put a mask in your kid and they can go do whatever they want. But is that the, is that one thing that scared me a year ago was when my kids told me that wearing a mask felt normal, and that's when we knew we had to do something different about that. Right. So it's it's horrible. So we want to we want to organize social events for kids. Maybe go rent a, the the dome is a great place. It's considered outdoors. It's warm throughout. The, it's warm throughout the winter. It's cold throughout the summer. And we can use our collective power and the the people that we have rent out the dome for a day or do some intramural events or anything like that. Those are the kinds of things we want to do to to help our kids who are being uh, left out of society. And then the last one: influence the culture. This is the big one for us. And so in, Ma in the Bible, Matthew 5, verse, 13, or verse 16, it says, Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds, and glorify your Father in heaven. 
So we want to let the light shine. We want to be a positive influence in the culture. If we want to take back our culture, we need to get involved, speak out, and be a voice for truth. Now I want to ask, hands up, anyone here in a, as a, uh, on a local board? Anyone on a local board? That's the problem. So when I was growing up, I was, uh, I was an athlete, played lots of sports. Uh, two big sports that I played, basketball and football. My coaches worked me very hard. And when we would be running laps, running lines, working out, our coach would tell us, no one else is working as hard as us. And that was the truth. No one worked as hard as we did, and we won. We won a lot. And that was great. We have spent years and decades being apathetic about our position in the culture. We haven't gotten involved. I'm just as bad as the next guy. I haven't gotten involved. But guess what? This comes down to how hard are we willing to work? The people that are doing this to us, they have worked hard. They have worked, they have worked at this for 30 years. And if we want to win, if we want to take back the culture, if we want to get our freedoms back, we need everybody. I challenge everybody here to get involved in a local board, whether it's whether it's a uh, hockey board or your condo board. I don't care what it is. Get involved in a board. Be the light in the world, and let let these these boards these are they are dominated by the people that are doing this to us and they, this is their own echo chamber we need to disrupt that echo chamber and, and let them know that that we exist and that we need to influence the culture so I, I encourage everybody get involved in the culture get on a board and do something and we're out here we're protesting this is great but getting getting into the boards and making a uh, making a positive change is going to be extremely extremely important. So we do have a we do have a committee that's that's working on finding opportunities to get involved on school boards and other uh, other organizations. So if you're if you're looking to get involved, I encourage you to reach out to us, and we'll try and find a place where you can get involved. Yeah, that's about uh, that's about all that uh, I had to say here. So if you wanted to find more about our group, so our group name is Hold the Line. Uh, we're on Telegram. So if you search for our group on Telegram, it's Hold the Line with two exclamation marks. You'll see us there. We've got an email, htlreddeer at gmail.com, and our website is htlrd at... Uh, what is our website? www.htlrd.ca I wrote it down wrong. <laughs> okay, thanks everyone. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, we got a couple add-ins here. Um, first up is Brandon Pringle. I'm not entirely sure what he's talking about, so I will let him introduce himself. Thanks, Jared. Hi everyone, my name is Brandon. Uh, thank you very much today for standing up for your country, brave and cold. I'm going to ask three things of you today. Uh, as as a uh, father, uh, as a grandfather, as a uh, someone that loves this country, I'm going to ask you for three things today. First, I'm going to ask you to be kind. Second, I'm going to ask you to be prepared. And third, I'm going to ask you to be determined. Please be kind. Return good for evil. The people that are giving you the finger out there today, they don't understand. They're afraid. Many of them have been vaxxed, and many of them have buyer's remorse. We have to be kind to these people. We need to love on these people. Many of them, uh, at the meeting, at Andrew's meeting on Monday night, one of the paramedics came up and was double vaxxed. And we asked him why, and he said, because I didn't know. We need to love on these people. You're not ever going to reach these people by trying to convince them. Just love on them and that'll tell them way more. Um, you know, St. Francis of Assisi said, 
Um, always show people kindness and when necessary, use words. Yes, amen. Second, be prepared. Have a printout of the Stats Canada website. It's difficult to find, but if you need my help, I'll help you find it. On the website, there's 4,000 cases of people critically injured by this poison death shot. And that word, it, those words are not my words. That's the word, those are the words of Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, who has treated 6,000 patients successfully of this. So be prepared. Don't try to argue your point. Have a piece of paper and say, well, have you looked at this? They can question you. You know, people said a prophet is not recognized in his own town. People can question what you say, but they can't question for a list of all the people critically injured on the Stats Canada website. It doesn't stop them. <laughs> Amen. My wife and I drove across Canada last year in the middle of COVID. And the message the Holy Spirit told her was, plant the seed of doubt and plant the seed of truth. You don't have to convince them. You plant the seed and the seed will grow and somebody else will come along and water the seed and somebody else will come along then and harvest the seed. Every little seed that you plant is a step towards victory. Science and truth are on your side, so you don't have to try to convince people. You tell them the truth and walk away. Martin Luther King Jr. said truth goes through three phases. First, it's ridiculed. We've, uh, we've gone past the ridicule phase. Second, it's violently opposed. That's what we're dealing with right now. We're in the violently opposed phase of truth. But, I, like our other speaker said, I'm here to give you hope. The third phase of truth is it's considered self-evident. Every time you're kind to somebody, every time you plant a seed, that gets us closer to winning this. Kenneth Hagin said, if you're willing to stand forever, it's not going to take very long. History will record what we did today. History is on our side. We're doing this for ourselves, for our kids, and our grandkids. And third, so again, first, I'm asking you please to be kind. Second, I'm asking you to be prepared. And third, I'm asking you to be determined. And I'm going to leave you with the shortest speech that Winston Churchill ever gave. He was known for giving two-hour speeches. I'm going to leave you with his very shortest speech ever. It was never, ever, ever give up. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yes. That was awesome. Thank you very much for that. Yes. I'm just going to add on a slight, slight bit here. Andrew spoke of they've been working on this for 30 years. So, first off, obviously, my name is Charles Holt. I uh, stepped away from my business or my career at Fitting because they had their mandates. I've lost three family members to the vaccine. My brother's been institutionalized in the mental institution since the lockdowns began. He talked about 30 years. This happened 30 years ago with my brother. These people, if they're not confronted, like they said, because they're individuals like you and me, the spoiled brats, spoiled children, whoever, it's you and me. We're the problem. We have to be confronted all the time about our own behavior. So, I got to give my brother a hug the other day. I hadn't seen him in about six months. They, out of the kindness of their heart, they let him come out and get a signature on a piece of paper and I got to hug him. He's shaking uncontrollably. This is a side effect of medications from the pharmaceutical industry. To get him off of that medication, we would have to do what Dr. Jordan Peterson had to do. We'd have to take him to Russia, put him in induced coma, so he can come out of it or die. 
You watch all the episodes of Dr. Jordan Peterson and what he had to do to get him off those medications. That's real. These are the same people. Imagine your kids, yourself, your family in that situation. You don't understand how bad this can get. That's the negative side. It's painful. I was 17 years in the army and I didn't, I didn't spend that time to be under tyrannical rule. Get involved. So just please, if you would, for a moment, imagine the positive end. We work hard, we build our communities, you aim for your best in your life. Take responsibility for your life. Stand up. Get on the boards like Andrew said. Get involved with us. We're going to work together to develop plans, but it takes personal responsibility in every way you possibly can. Carry your weight, as much weight as you could possibly carry. Encourage each other to do so, and when you fail, and you will fail, help each other get up. So we will win. It always goes this way. But this time we might prevent the violent, the real deep, scary violence that is possible. I served in Bosnia. I saw what that looks like. I was involved in that. It's very bad. It's really, it's unbelievable. So take responsibility as best you can. Carry each other. Uplift one another. Encourage each other. And look, you have to envision a positive future because you will create that future. It's up to us. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you very much for coming out. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles. Uh, one more add-on speaker. We have Gavin up next. Hello, Freedom Fighters! How's everyone doing? You know, it's it's funny, um, uh, what was I going to say? Totally just blanked. Isn't that awesome when you just blank right at the beginning of your speech? Yeah, I, I used to be scared of public speaking a long time ago, but through the freedom movement, I'm not scared of public speaking anymore, but I do sometimes blank. I, I'm kind of like, I think I'm like a little ADHD, so I, I got I to gotta pull this up to remember what I was about to say. I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Um... You know, I'm always amazed how attractive freedom fighters are. I guess your soul is more important than fake body parts and expensive clothing. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick and tired of being abused by our captors. And you have to, the thing is, you have to draw, draw lines in the sand, right? Like at a certain point, you gotta like look around and just like, okay, you know what, this has gone, this has gone too far. For myself personally, my line in the sand was when we had to lock down for 14 days without a democratic vote. That's when I drew my line in the sand. So you can imagine I'm just teetering off the edge now because I've been pushed so far. <laughs> but the thing is, you have to get mad, God damn it. I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take this anymore. <laughs> Say it with me. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Somewhere along the line, you changed. You let someone point a finger in your face and tell you you're not good. <laughs> okay, I'm, for, I'm forgetting this quote. It's uh, Rocky Balboa, so I spoiled the whole thing. Um, I, I had it. I had it earlier. If I, okay, wait. Yeah. So somewhere along the line, you change. You stop being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're not good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. 
Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits. And not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or nobody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. So yeah, Rocky Balboa 2006. I think it's a sixth movie. Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's been a really rough two years for me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been rough for everyone. Everyone's struggling. And and it's not easier whether you're indoctrinated by this or whether you are you see it. Like for myself, seeing it all the time, it's been painful. I thought I was alone for a long time before the protests started happening. And then when there was, you know, 10, 20, 30, 60, you know, I think the biggest one was 12,000 in Calgary. So it's it's been a long, hard road, and it it's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But we are the light in the world now. And the thing is, there is a lot of light at the end of the tunnel, right? You just, you got to stay strong and just, I don't know, remember your values and what you stand for because these are things that you take to the grave, right? Integrity is something you die for, and... It's just how it is. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll end up living in a system that you don't support and that you don't want to be a part of. Anyway, I'm done preaching to you guys. I love you guys. Keep your chins up. Remember, stay, like, stay strong. Don't let this shit get you down. Um, let's have a great march. Thank you, Gavin. Um, I'll keep this real quick because I know everyone's probably frozen. I am as well. Um, three weeks ago, we had a rally downtown at the Paternity Center. Uh, Education Minister Adriana Lagrange was down there. We made a lot of noise that day, and that has translated into some discussions and some movements with counselors, with MLAs in town. Over this past week, I've been able to speak with them, start a dialogue, and, and kind of keep things moving forward on the the. Uh, reduction of the uh, REP program for our kids. So I have no doubt in my mind that everybody, you know, going out to that march, sending in emails to, to the counselors and stuff, that turned the needle. You know, they heard you, they heard us, and that is the way forward. we got to keep the pressure on the local politicians, the local administration, and we got to keep fighting back for our kids. So over the next few days here, I'll put up a couple more calls to action that I need your guys' help with. Um, based on my discussions with the counselors, we need to get people coming forward with their stories, much like Charles had brought his story forward with his family. That is what's going to change the dial on this. It's not, you know, constantly inundating them with stats and figures. It's tugging at people's heartstrings. That's what's got us to this point today, and that's what's going to get us out of this in the future. So I'll get that out here in the near future. Please keep standing up for your kids. Please come out to the rallies, join the boards. Like everyone said here today, whatever you can do, get out and do it. Everyone's got a part to play. Rely on that personal responsibility. Keep fighting and keep Canada true north strong and free. Thank you very much for coming out. Let's go march. So why? Good deal. I don't know how to undo it. All oh, good. It's not actually any of mine this time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So yeah, that was.